Okay, so we have this uh, CIDR simulator in Logix Pro. Um, last time we have written this program to to automate the system. So here this box is coming and when it reaches this proximity sensor, it's detected and we we stop the, the conveyor. The conveyor is being driven by the motor. It's connected to output 20. And then we fill it, start filling it in. Uh, we turn on the solenoid valve till the level sensor tells us that the box is full. And as soon as it is full, uh, then we start the conveyor again. And we show different states of the system through these lamps. Uh, initially, when we start moving the box, so we turn on the run lamp. It's connected with output two, uh, 2. And then when it reaches here and we start filling, we turn on the solenoid valve, we go into the filling mode. And that's when we turn on the O2-3 output. And um, as soon as the level sensor tells us that the box is full, we go into the full mode. Okay? So... I'll download this into the PLC uh, and then run it to make sure that it does the uh, it performs the same function as we have written the program for. So we go into the run mode and we push the start button and then that's how it works. <clears throat> now what we are going to do is <clears throat> let's stop the simulator, go into the program mode and then reset the simulation okay now the task in this lab is to aid a subroutine um, so the purpose is to practice subroutines in in the later logic diagrams so for example this this particular run it does the filling so it turns on the solenoid let's give it a level this is um our solenoid Okay, and the condition is that in order for us to turn on the solenoid, we have to be in the running mode. Okay, it's already, it's already running. And then I13, the proximity sensor tells us that the box is right in front of it. And the 024, it's not full yet, so we, we don't want to overfill it. And then the O20 tells us that the conveyor is stopped. Okay, so now let's say that this particular task, we just move this and the following. The following is one we, when we turn on the solenoid valve, we turn on this particular lamp, the filling one. So it indicates that the filling process has started. So let's just take these two rungs to a different subroutine and we'll just call it from here. Okay, so for that, uh, you can have the subroutine instructions in any one of these uh, tapes here. So let's say I, I decide to put all my, my instructions here. So in order to do that, let's let's create a subroutine here. Okay. So we go to the program control. Uh, these are different instructions that are being grouped here. So we need the SBR, the start subroutine instruction. So by default, it has named it U3, okay? That's a memory address of the subroutine. And then we add uh, the return instruction. Uh, that's here. So this is the minimum that a subroutine should have. But what we are trying to do is we want to bring these two rungs and just call them from here. So copy, uh, uh, and, and in fact, cut this rung and paste it here and bring another rung this one and paste it there now our subroutine is ready the next is just to is to call it so how do we call it we call it from the exact same location where we left so let's say we uh, put a new rung here and the purpose of that rung will be just to call that subroutine. So 
go to the program control category of instructions again and this time you need a JSR jump to subroutine you're just calling that subroutine and it automatically has the name u3 but if you're having another subroutine in any one of these other uh, subroutines uh, tabs then you can name them so here so we are good now let's download the program and start going to the run mode and push the start button so the behavior is the same nothing has changed what we have achieved is we have added modul modularity to the code we have made it more organized so every time you do some concrete task it's a good practice to create a different subroutine for that task and then call it from the from the main subroutine so this was today's lab so what the task is for you guys is to um, install this one go to the program mode reset some your task is to create a separate subroutine just for the turning on the full lamp okay so just take this run to a different subroutine and call it from here so that is the task that you should do for today's lab thank you